this guy's uh, on a full scholarship, one of my son's friends. Um, these are high school age kids. That this is unfortunately this year I had to close the high school because we were just financially not able to to continue it. But these are high school high school kids, junior high kids. And so they um, they have to go to the state school now. Well, I'm homeschooling mine, mm -hmm. and uh, and the rest of them just have to go where they can find a place. Um, and no one else is offering scholarships. So the ones that have money, yes, they can find another school. Uh, but the ones that don't have money. Are, are sort of out of luck. At least they we've taken them to this point, um, and uh, so that you know we hope that they will continue. I don't really believe once you've turned on a young brain, I think it's very difficult to actually turn it off. Um, so that we're, we're not too bad there. We uh, we teach we do a lot of art and handicrafts to teach them manual skills and also to to um, promote their creativity. Uh, we try to use. Um, unlike many other schools, actually, in Honduras, we try to use things that we can get easily and cheaply. We use throwaway bottles and beans and and you know, old styrofoam foil yeah. And, yeah. And, and used styrofoam mm -hmm. packaging and other things. The teachers are very good at, at finding things that they can use. Uh, it's interesting that even the public schools, most of the public schools, when the kids have a project, the teachers say, well, go and buy uh, this, and buy this, and mm -hmm. buy this. So there's a connection between money and creativity. And creativity. Right. And, and, so yeah. that it, and we've tried to, to really show them that you can make something really nice out of old flowers and old plastic bottles and so forth. Um, in... in, in uh, if you use your your mind, you know the mind is the most powerful thing that a human being has, and uh, uh, the um, it's unfortunate that that sometimes, and I think Mark Twain said it very well when he said you shouldn't let schooling ruin your education. Um, we try to make sure that that we don't. Um, we also uh, here's a young young fellow that's uh, having some apple juice. Uh, we also don't have any, our cafeteria does not have Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. does not have soft drinks, we don't have candy, um, even though the kids want it, and I've actually had parents that have complained terribly that their children couldn't get a Coca-Cola at school. Um, unfortunately, although we've, our American uh, corporate structure has managed to make Coca-Cola one of the most popular drinks on the planet. We have not followed also with an education of how its nutritional value is a negative number. Uh, the ability um, to uh, uh, read the label and interpret um, it. <laughs> it. It tastes good and, and, it, and it's wonderful and so everybody thinks, well, then it must be good for you. Unfortunately, as many of us know, it's not the most nutritious uh, thing to drink. And so we've tried to also train the kids that, train them to drink other things, to, to fruit juices, natural, and fruit that is naturally growing. Um, so that they, they, even though they complain sometimes, at least at school they're, they're having that, ex that um, experience that they wouldn't get at home uh, because Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola are the two biggest um, beverages in, in the local area. Um, the, uh, let's see what, here's some more kids. Here's, uh, here's a young lady doing some, some of her math work with uh, poker chips and counters and also some uh, geometry um, and so forth that she's working on. Here's a magnifying glass, working outside with a magnifying glass, looking at things and, and trying to discover um, what, what it looks like at a, a magnified level. And uh, just like all, all children, they, they also love to make faces and, and uh, act up a little. One of the, uh, I, I don't always tell them how much I used to act up because that only would be more difficult for me. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, it's 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 very interesting now trying to 
to make those decisions as to what we allow and what we don't. But, uh, so you're going through the process that Corlett did in what rules do we set up? There's a, a reason behind every rule? Yes, yeah. The, the, one of the things that I've always had difficulty with in life is following a rule that there was no reason for. And so I'm, I'm pretty strict when I'm making rules or when we're talking in a, in a meeting because I don't do it all myself with the teachers. When, the teacher, when somebody comes up with a rule that they think we should have, um, before we put it into place, there has to be a reason for it, and, and more than just, well, because we think it's a good idea. Um, and uh, there we got that's another one of our, our uh, scholarship girls. From, uh, here's one of, our, one of our volunteer teachers. We operate, this is, a, um, I would say, probably third grade. Um, we operate the school basically on with volunteer teachers and uh, with um, charitable funding. That's the only way that we stay alive. And the, the current global financial situation has made the charitable funding a, lo a lot more difficult, and that was the reason we needed to close the high school this year.